obviously we all want audiences coming back and we want to start performing for people. What does the CSO look like next year, five years, and hopefully 10 years from now, in, in your opinion? And how will you get there? The, I think it, it, at its core is, is uh, capturing uh, and understanding and, and, and acknowledging the power, the, the incredible emotional, magical powers that come with listening uh, to live music. Magic. And, and it is magic. It's, yeah. it's not something that, that anybody has been able to completely quantify. And I yeah. think that that's great. I don't think that everybody, I don't think people can anymore yeah. that you can stand in front of a, a great painting and, and understand why it, why it does to you or read a great book or stand in front of an extraordinary iconic piece of architecture. But it's um, lived, we're a living art. Yeah. Um, you know, we're one of the few arts disciplines that exist in time, not space. Mm. And, and, and there's a magic associated with that. Um, but, but, you know, we have to really, and this is a Tom Morris, Jim Collins, good to great thing, but you've got to really have a very tough conversation about, internally about what your core values are. And it's very easy for organizations to, to uh, name a long list of things that are their core values that aren't really their core values, you know, concert formats and well, do more Beethoven and less Brahms. Those aren't core values. Core values are, you know, the, the things that are unchanging, uh, you know, the, the emotional power uh, that, that you need to get as much out of the way of between the composer and the listener and the conduit that threads itself from the composer's brain uh, through the conductor to the musicians and then out to the audience. Um, you know, that sacred conduit needs to be as barrier free as possible. Mm. And my job is to make sure no that no friction, no, no resistance. And yeah. my job in any job of an arts manager is to create an environment uh, where both the audience and the performers have no barriers. Um, they're not, the audience is not uncomfortable being in a concert hall because it was segregated up until 30 years ago. Uh, the, the musicians feel comfortable on stage. They're paid a competitive salary. Uh, they're respected. Uh, the conductor has the ability to realize his or her uh, musical vision uh, as partners in the organization. So all of these things, uh, you know, my job is to create environments that allow all this to happen. Mm. And um, so as you think about, back to your question about what the next five to 10 years brings, it's, it's to unlock what's already there uh, and to let it, let, it, let it breathe, let it run and mm -hmm. do it in a way that's, you know, that is that is welcoming and exciting and inspiring and not be afraid to fail uh have the have the resources and we have them here we have the resources to take risk and the only way you you the only way that you grow is to take risk and the and what inherently comes with risk taking is failure and you've got to be okay with that uh, what we do know is that doing the same thing as we've done for the past 125 years, doing the same thing for the next 10 years, is going to give us uh, what we want because it won't. So I'd rather I'd rather risk and fail than not risk and fail. That's I think. First of all, this is a great way, I think, to wrap this up. But I think this is why you and I have always stayed in each other's orbits. Because I think both of you and I push in different directions, except obviously you have this incredible wealth of knowledge and experience, real world experience. And I'm sort of in awe sitting here listening, wishing I asked you some of these questions 10 years ago in Charlotte. <laughs> well, maybe, I, probably did, I probably wouldn't have said the same things and you probably wouldn't have heard it with the same ears. So. No, I no, think, no. And there's, I, a, I, there's I, a great Avett Brothers song uh, uh, that said, all my mistakes have led me to you. Um, it's... 
<laughs> and it's true, you know, all individual pathways and, and I would say even organizational journeys um, and ones as successful as a CSO that was given to me. And my job is to keep that success going. But, you know, we've learned through a lot of bitter experience too. You know, this is an organization that's had its ups and downs and, uh, but uh, it, yeah, the, the key is to keep learning and to keep, keep asking and to stay curious. Yeah, yeah, amazing. John, 